Okay, welcome everyone to our, off our office hours this week. Um, here we have just a slide. We've collected words um, from other teachers during professional development describing how teachers are, what teachers are. Just remember how amazing you are. Today we're talking about writing compliant IEPs and we're focusing on the academic and functional skill gaps and how statement. And this is our team. Um, I'm Carly Thibodeau. I joined the team in July and I have been an educator for 21 years. I um, taught in special ed. I've been a classroom teacher and an RTI teacher. And Colette Sullivan is our leader. Colette, you want to come on and say hi? Our leader. <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Colette Sullivan. I'm the federal programs coordinator. I get to work with this exceptional team. Um, before I joined the department, I was a special ed teacher myself for 30 years, primarily worked with students with autism. Thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you. We have Leora. Hi, I'm Leora Byrus. I was also a special education teacher in an SPPS, um, as well as an ed tech, um, until about four years ago when I joined the department. Thanks. And Jennifer. I'm Jennifer Gleason. I have been with the department about a year and a half, and I too was a special ed teacher before that. Awesome. And Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Pelletier. I am the admin support for the monitoring team. Been with the state um, for this department for um, about six years. And prior to that, I worked in an elementary school for 16 years. Thank you. All right. So here is a slide of our um, 22, 23 office hours and the link to sign up for those. Um, this is the link to the procedural manual and I'm pretty sure they've been dropped in the chat as well, this link. This is a great tool to use when filling out those forms, um, gives directions, can answer a lot of questions that you might have. This is a link to the Maine Unified Special Ed Regulations or MUSER. Um, that's also been dropped in the chat and this is just good reading in your spare time. All right, what's the purpose of an IEP? So IDEA says that an IEP is to ensure that all children with disabilities have available to them a free appropriate public education or that fate. Um, and it's really about meeting their unique needs and most of all promoting movement back to general education. Um, section two of the IEP talks about the disability of the child. And so this is just the definition of a child with a disability is an individual who they have reached the age of three years, they haven't graduated from school or reached the age of 20, or now we have guidance to 22, um, has been observed in the learning environment or classroom setting, has been evaluated according to the rules, um, and has been determined to have a disability and have has one or more of the dis disabilities listed in MUSER. Uh, and this is just a snapshot of section two of the IEP where we check off those disability categories. Um, and the citation in MUSER, where you can find the definition of each of those and the procedure for determination. This is a link to that administrative letter that was issued in January of 2021 outlining the change and ending age for special ed eligibility. And that change went from 20 years to 22 years. And MUSER defines adverse effect. Um, they're saying it means harmful, impeding, obstructing, or detrimental, um, and has an adverse effect on the child's performance in regular education. MUSER also defines the need um, as being a distinctly measurable and persistent gap. So it isn't equal to an accommodation. It's about a distinctly and measurable and persistent gap is that need. So, and in conjunction with that, how the child's disability um, is affecting their progress in the general ed curriculum. So, we use those evaluations to just determine those skill gaps. Um, this is just a visual to help understand that those evaluations help determine that disability identification, 
And then you also use those to look at and determine what are those academic and functional skill gaps that are having an adverse effect on the student. So this is a IEP alignment visual that just shows how all the pieces of the IEP fit together and align. Um, and we're focusing first on the academic needs and how statement. So this is section four of the IEP where in 4C, you list out those distinctly measurable and persistent gaps in academic performance and how they affect the child's involvement and progress in general. Page two of the procedural manual is where it talks about section 4C. And this is a great resource. If you are stuck on this, it gives you directions, gives you some examples in that blue box at the bottom. Now, when we talk about academic needs, we're talking about those broad areas of reading, writing, listening, speaking, and math problem solving. Now, keep in mind, these are the broad areas. When you're listing out those distinctly measurable and persistent gaps in academic performance and the how statement, you're thinking about more specific skills. Um, so when you're thinking about those, you have to include both, both those gaps in academic performance and how they affect the child in the general ed curriculum. So remember to include both things in that 4C. And remember, these are specific areas. So be specific, avoid those broad academic areas and don't put in evaluation results or standard scores in this area, in this section. So some of the specific skill gaps that you may consider um, under reading, that's that broad academic area, but to be more specific, you may focus in on decoding, encoding, fluency, comprehension. And these are just some examples of specific areas under those broad areas of academic performance. And then the how statement. Think about how do those skill deficits impact the child's involvement, access, and progress in the general ed curriculum. So we put those two things together. So we have that broad academic area of reading and they identified that it's reading fluency is that specific skill area or skill gap. And so Jimmy's reading fluency deficits impact his ability to access grade level reading material. So you can see the specific skill gap paired with that house statement. And this is how they may look when you write them out in that section 4C. And as we know, students may have more than one um, academic skill gap. So if that's the case, feel free to list them in a bulleted list like this. It just makes it really easy to see those skill gaps. And you can write one how statement that encompasses all of those skill gap areas. So let's take a look and review. So this statement in section 4C says, Michael's standard scores on the WJR in reading was a 78. So tell us in the chat box why this is not compliant. Any ideas? Right, no house statement. Very good. Impact, right? No specific skill. Excellent job. And they used a test result. Very good. Yep, standard score. Awesome. So you got them all. So they referenced that standard score. There was no specific skill deficit because that reading is too broad. And there was no house statement. Excellent work. So instead, it may look something like this. Michael's reading comprehension deficits impact his ability to access and engage in grade appropriate reading activities. Okay, let's try another one. So this statement says Benny's math deficits impact his ability to access grade level math curriculum. So tell us why that is not compliant. 
Right. Math is too broad. Absolutely. Yep. Not specific enough. Perfect. Very good. You guys got it. No specific skill deficit. Math is too broad. Excellent. Okay. So instead, we might want to write Benny's deficits in addition subtraction facts impact his ability to access grade level math curriculum. So much more specific addition subtraction facts. Okay, any questions about academic gaps in section 4C or the house statement? Yeah. All right, I don't see anything popping up. I'm trying to be good and wait though, because I know it takes a minute. Okay, question, is there IEP writing software? I am not aware of IEP writing software. I know that there are um, like systems that schools use, like Adori is one of them that helps guide you through the IEP. Um, I also know that when writing goals, there, um, in my experience, I've used this thing called goal book which helped you get some goal, um, academic goals and behavioral goals and things like that. But that's all up to your district and like what they decide to do. You're welcome. Okay, so, all right. So now we're going to move on to the next part of section four, which is the functional needs and how statement. So again, just to see how it fits into that alignment within the IEP. And here's the section 4D on the IEP where you put the measure measurable and persistent gaps in functional performance and how they affect the child's involvement in the general ed curriculum. Again, here's the procedural manual and on page 22 and 23 is where they go through section 4D. If you have any questions about that. And for functional, these are those broad areas. You've got cognitive, communicative, motor, adaptive, social, emotional, sensory, and these are the broad areas. So in 4D, you want to focus in on those persistent gaps in functional performance and how those deficits and those gaps have an adverse impact on the child accessing the general ed curriculum. So remember to include both. You need the functional skill gaps and the house statement. Um, so those specific areas, remember to be very specific. Don't focus in on those broad functional areas. Don't use evaluation results and don't do standard scores. So when you're thinking about those more specific areas in functional, these are some areas that you might consider. So under cognitive, that broad area, maybe you can focus in on problem solving, self-awareness, peer interaction, self-initiation, et cetera. So these are just some examples of more specific areas in function, in functional rather. And then that how statement, how do those skills impact the child's involvement in the general ed curriculum? or access to or progress in. So here are some examples um, of the more specific skill gaps. Uh, if I jump down to motor, you see Michael's fine motor deficits impact his ability to maintain appropriate grasp on writing tools during writing time. So you've got that more specific skill gap um, paired with that house statement. And this is how it may look in section 4D of the IEP. And again, there may be more than one functional skill gap that you need to put into 4D. And if that's the case, feel free to put them in a bulleted list. Makes it much easier when you're trying to align those skill gaps in section four to present level and goals in section five. And then remember to include that how statement. So if you make the bulleted list, that's great, but just make sure that you still have that how statement about how it's impacting them in the general ed curriculum. 
Okay, so let's review these ones. So in 4D, we have Michael's standard score on the Goldman Fristo evaluation showed errors in articulation. So tell us in the chat box why this is not compliant. Yep, Jen, you were right on it. No house statement. Yep. And they're using the standard score. Very good. All right, excellent job. You guys got it. You're right on it. So reference that standard score and no half statement. Great. All right. Let's. So instead, Michael's deficits in articulation impact his ability to communicate effectively with peers in the general education curriculum. Awesome. All right. So let's try another one. Keith often refuses to come to school. Attendance is a concern. Tell us in the chat box why this is not compliant. Right, no skill deficit or how statement. Very good. <laughs> and we want everyone to come to school. Yes. Awesome. Very good. No skill deficit or how statement. Very good. Yep. Outcome based. I was right. We want all kids to come to school. No skill deficits and no how statement. Jen, I feel like you've been to a training or two before. Okay, so instead, Keith has anxiety and self-regulation deficits. These deficits impact his ability to attend school and participate in grade level activities. All right. So, and just a reminder that if you have identified those specific skill deficits in section four, they must align to the present level, to a goal, and to a service. And so this is just a great visual to kind of put it all together. As you can see, the academic and functional skill gaps are all in one big circle with that present level and the measurable goal because there should be that one-to-one -one correspondence between those three things. And then they also lead into the service group. So it's all about that alignment. Any questions? Nothing in chat. Okay, I'll keep going. All right, here is here are some resources. Um, our website is under construction right now. And so these are, cross my fingers, are the most up-to-date links to all of these things that you can find on the website. So the first one is to our professional development calendar um, for the current office hours and PD. Uh, the second one, is a link to past recordings, past uh, trainings with their recordings and their PowerPoints. Um, and then the, the last three are resources, you've got special ed resources, you've got some laws and regulations and special ed forms and reporting. All right, and then if you Carly, would, yeah. Sorry, Carly, can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. Jennifer just put in chat to the IEP quick reference document. Do you want to just speak to that really quickly so people know what that is? Sure. Um, so the IEP quick reference document is a great tool that outlines, um, but it has some findings on it, but that's, you don't really need to know that, but it show, tells you each section of the IEP and kind of gives you a little list of things that you need to have in that section so it is compliant um, and tell me if I'm forgetting something and there's, I think that's it, right? Yeah, no, yeah. that's great. Okay. It's, yeah. It's citation and then what makes it compliant, it's a great. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we've shared that in chat before, but yeah, thank right. you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, and then I am, I just put in chat also the link to this. Uh, I know the link is on the slide, but just in case you want to do it right now and you're on a computer, you can go to that link and fill out this feedback form. And that's also how you get your contact hour for today's training. Um, or you can use the QR code if you want to use your mobile device or tablet. Uh, it takes like two minutes to just fill out some questions. And uh, when you select your training, it should be today's date, 10, 26, 22. It's writing compliant IEPs. 
academic and functional skill gaps. And when you type in your email, if you do say you want a contact hour, just please be careful and make sure you spell your email correctly so it, the contact hour gets to you. All right. And I think that is it. Thank you so much for joining us today for our office hours. Made it through my first solo professional development. <laughs> you did awesome. You did great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you.